Lies of P is a true Souls game at heart, taking huge inspiration from Dark Souls and Bloodborne, but in classic Souls-like fashion, it is intentionally not very good at explaining its mechanics and systems. Whether you're a Souls pro or total newbie to the genre, this spoiler-free video should provide you with some useful tips and tricks to help you understand the things that Lies of P just doesn't really explain to you. Number one, don't sweat this first decision. First up, this starting choice about which class you want to pick doesn't really matter all that much. You're basically picking a starting weapon and a slight buff to skills that can be evened out pretty quickly through leveling up just a couple of times. It's also worth noting that you can buy all of these starting weapons from the first vendor right outside the first major boss room. So this isn't a decision that will haunt you for the rest of the game. Out here alone? You could use some help. If you're new to Souls-like games, then pick the balanced option for well-rounded offense and defense. If you're more of a Bloodborne fan and you want to stay in the fight, relying on perfect blocking and dodging, then go for the rapier option. And if your typical Souls-like play is all about being heavily armored, blocking your way through hits and hitting hard when it counts, go for the greatsword. Regardless of which starting weapon you'd pick, I'd encourage you to buy them all when you get the opportunity from this vendor, as this game has an extensive weapon list and enormous amount of customization that allows you to make any weapon suit your playstyle, but more on that a little later. Number two, don't fear the fury attacks. If games have taught us anything over the years, it's when enemies start glowing red, you should run. And while that is absolutely a valid tactic in Lies of P, it's not your only option. The game will tell you that these fury attacks cannot be blocked or dodged, but they can be perfectly blocked. And if you dodge backward out of your attacker's range, then they can be avoided. So if you nail your perfect blocking, you can stay in the fight and build up some decent stagger meter on the enemy in the process. And if you learn your foe's attack patterns, you can leave them exhausted, swinging out thin air and vulnerable to a couple of quick free hits. Number three, altering weapons. One aspect of Lies of P that might be easy to overlook is the ability to swap weapon blades and handles. At first, it might seem like a bit of a waste to put a tiny dagger tip onto the end of your giant greatsword handle, but the truth is it can be extremely valuable. If, like me, you're concentrating on one playstyle and leveling up to match, then certain weapons that you may find may not be that useful for you at first. For example, I spec'd all of my levels into motivity or strength. I was all about hitting hard and having decent defense. So when I came across a dagger that inflicted fire damage and scaled with technique or dexterity, I thought I'd leave that in my backpack for the rest of the game. That was until every tooltip and NPC in this early game area kept telling me that all the enemies here are vulnerable to fire. So I threw that little fire dagger blade onto my police baton handle that scaled better with motivity and it quickly became one of my go-to combinations. You can swap the blades and handles out at Eugene in Hotel Karat, and it's worth experimenting with. The handle dictates the moveset and damage scaling of the weapon, and the blade dictates the damage type and defensive capabilities of the weapon. It's also worth knowing that the first fable art is tied to the blade, while the second is tied to the handle. Try some different combinations out on the dummies in the courtyard of the hotel and find your perfect combo. And if that wasn't enough customization for you, then let me introduce you to Cranks. Cranks allow you to change the level associated with damage scaling for a weapon. So if you had a great sword you really loved, but you'd put all of your skill points into technique, then you can chat to Eugene and use a technique crank to change that weapon to scale with technique. Number four, the best defense can be a good offense. Lies of P borrows combat mechanics from all of the best Souls games, and the intricacies of that can be a little overwhelming. The important thing to note is that blocking enemy attacks will still chip away at your health, but some bigger weapons have better defense than the smaller ones. For example, the starting greatsword has a blocking value of 65.37, while the rapier only has 37.32, meaning blocking through attacks with the rapier will cause you to take more damage. Those values may change as you level up and upgrade weapons, but the difference is still worth bearing in mind. If you do get hit though, or take a fair bit of damage while blocking, then fear not, as just like in Bloodborne, following up with a bevy of your own blows can restore some of that health that you just lost indicated by this faint red portion of your health bar. Perfectly timed blocks will negate all incoming damage and can even destroy your enemy's weapons if you perfectly block enough attacks. 
Perfectly blocking and landing heavy blows will also increase the chances of staggering your enemy. If their health starts to flash white, landing a charged heavy attack will leave them vulnerable for a fatal attack, which you can pull off with a light attack when you see this icon. If you're well placed, you might even be able to sneak in a couple of extra cheeky hits before going in for the fatal attack, but don't wait too long. Number 5. Clothes aren't just an aesthetic choice. Pinocchio looks great in Lies of P, and as you explore the city of Karat, you'll find new outfits that you can dress up your not-so-real boy in. But this isn't necessarily just a fashion choice. To avoid spoilers, I won't go into too much detail here, but there is at least one early NPC that will react differently to you depending on what you're wearing when you approach them. So, read the lore behind those snazzy new outfits and pick your wardrobe carefully. Number 6. Read your item descriptions And speaking of reading those descriptions, you should probably get into the habit of doing that for most items that you pick up in this game. This will be second nature to experienced soul players, but if you're brand new to the genre, you might not know that item descriptions are not just for lore hunters. They can contain hints to side quests and tips on how to get the most out of that particular item. For example, large ergo sources rewarded when you defeat bosses will give you substantial ergo if you use them from your inventory, but the item description hints that these might be sought after treasures for certain NPCs. Finding that NPC and trading with them will give you the opportunity to get some powerful weapons and amulets. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's odd. I thought I was the only one with a sound mind here. Number 7. Emotes aren't just for fun. That's right, emoting isn't just a fun, quirky thing you can do in Lies of P. Sometimes they have more value than that. Take the check ground emote, for example. That's not entertaining, fun, or quirky at all, so then perhaps it's useful at some point. Wink wink, nudge nudge. I won't spoil anything here, but when dealing with certain situations, characters, riddles, or quests, try not to forget about your arsenal of emotes. Number 8. Check for side quest markers. There is no map or quest log in Lies of P, but if somebody wants to chat to you to progress a storyline or quest, then an icon will appear next to that location when you enter the fast travel menu. You'll often see this in Hotel Karat because that's where a lot of your friends are hanging out, but every now and then it's worth scrolling back through old locations to see if there are any new opportunities to explore or conversations to be had. Unexpected guests are welcome. I hope you found some of these tips useful, and if you have any of your own, please do drop them in the comment section below. I've been Matt for FGS. Make sure you subscribe here on YouTube to discover something new in gaming every single day.